Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Behind The Reel. I'm your host, John, and today we've got another Lowrance video for you guys. If you guys are looking to get high-speed depth readings on your Lowrance unit, you're gonna wanna watch this video. you guys you've got your Lowrance unit you may have gotten it with or without a transducer but you're wanting to know how to get those high speed depth readings you may be noticing that you're losing those depths at 10 15 20 miles an hour or even before that the answer to your question is going to be a shoot through the whole transducer if you're running a fiberglass boat that would be my suggestion and if you're running an aluminum boat, you're gonna want a 2D skimmer. So this is gonna be a secondary 2D transducer, whether you're running an active imaging three in one or an active imaging two in one, these newer units are going to be able to accept both transducers. So you've got on the HDS series of units, you've got two sonar ports, you've got a blue and a black. That blue one on your carbon and prior units is going to be a seven pin but just understand with the lives they actually switch that blue port over to a nine pin connection so if you've got a live or a pro you need a nine pin transducer to do what we're talking about doing whether you mount that to the transom or you shoot it through the hole if you're running a fiberglass boat, you're gonna be able to access the bilge area and you're gonna to want to mount this through hole transducer in a nice flat surface as far back to the transom as you can get and you want this thing to be centered. If you guys are looking for an install video, this isn't necessarily it. I just wanna let you guys know how you can obtain this information. If you're running an HDS Carbon, HDS Gen 3, Gen 2, you're gonna be able to run a seven pin 2D transducer. If you want something that is transom mounted, go with the HST WSBL. I think you can get them for around 65 bucks. We have also used a bunch of those transducers, probably hundreds if not thousands, uh, for glassing it in and shooting through the hole. It is definitely something you can do if you're a first timer. You may want to go with that pod style transducer that's nice and flat. That is going to help the install process go a little bit smoother. But the big thing that you guys are going to want to look for is whether that's a 7 pin or a 9 pin transducer. Now that is when it comes to HDS units. Some of you guys may have Elite units or Elite FS, you know, Elite TI, TI2. Uh, there is an option for you as well. You guys only have one sonar port and that is a nine pin. Just understand that there is a Y cable, splitter cable, whatever you want to call it, that the Lowrance made. It is very hard to get a hold of these days, so you might do a little bit of digging, but I will take the information from that part and I will put it down in the description below. That way if you are searching, you can go look on eBay or something like that. But there is a part out there for you that will help you to make that connection. Just understand you cannot run a three in one with a 2D transducer when you're running through a single port. When you're running through that structure port on an elite unit, you cannot run two sources of 2D through a single port. So you have to have a two in one, which is only gonna provide you down and side imaging and then you run your shoot through the hole or your transom mounted 2D transducer in order to get those high speed depth readings. If you are running an aluminum boat or you're transom mounting that transducer, I would highly recommend that you get one of the transom blocks to allow you to move that transducer a little bit if needed. Chances are the first time you mount that thing, you're not gonna get it exactly where you want it. You'll probably be able to get it pretty close, but you may end up losing that at 30 miles an hour, you know, instead of 15 or 20. I know of guys that are transom mounting these transducers and they're getting high speed depth readings up to 50 or 60 miles an hour. It is possible, but if you want to be able to tweak it, put it on a transom block, and then that way, if you do have to move the transducer, you're not drilling new holes into the boat. 
Some of you guys may be asking, why do I want to get high speed depth readings? There's a lot of people out there that don't really care to get this information. It is very handy to have while you're running down the lake. You can cross reference that with your map. But I think the biggest thing is safety. If you're running on like a river system that might have sandbars that are constantly moving, just getting an idea of what kind of depth you're in at that moment is going to help you determine how you navigate those waters. It's really not gonna do anything for you in that moment. If you see that you're in one foot of water, you can use that information to determine maybe where you should go next, right? So um, if something is fluctuating in that body of water, in that river system, whatever it may be, if you know that it's normally three or four feet in that area, maybe you can avoid you know running into a sandbar with that information but a lot of the times by the time you realize you're in super shallow water it's a little bit too late and uh, you may be dragging that lower unit through something anyway so the biggest thing if you have this tool available to you to avoid low spots is going to be your mapping with Lowrance, you've got the built-in c map on a lot of their newer units so definitely utilize that and don't always rely on your high speed depth readings because you're going to be able to avoid those low spots before you ever get to them when it comes to your map you can use your custom depth shading to highlight those low spots in red to to help you just be aware of them so there are other tools on your belt that you can use but a lot of times when these high speed depth readings are necessary those tools are not going to be available. So if you're on a river system that maybe hasn't been mapped out or a lake that hasn't been mapped out, that's when those high speed depth readings really come into play. So if you guys have decided that you want to get high speed depth readings on your Lowrance unit, I'll go ahead and put those part numbers and links down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check those out at Russell Marine Products and tell them Behind the Real sent you. If you have any questions at all moving forward on this topic, make sure you put them down in the comment section below. If you have ideas for future videos, I would love to hear that as well. And I appreciate you guys tuning in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.